Assalamu alaikum dear students. I am Professor Farid Awagan. I am starting your lecture on the uterine fibroid. I am the chairperson of the Canyon Obstetrics. So today's our lecture is the uterine fibroid. That is the benign tumor. Benign tumor of the smooth muscle of the uterus. And that is originate from the uterine smooth muscles. These lesions are the benign nucleosome of the muscular wall of the uterus, composed primarily of the smooth muscle. So its incidence is usually, it is between the reproductive age group, that is around the, from the menarches started up to the menopausal age group. So these are the commonly, most common pelvic tumor. It is found more common in the plague negus, while in the white 25% by 50% in the black women. So these are the muscles tumor, smooth muscles tumor. They are occurring in the 30% of the women above the age of the 30 years. While it is the 75% of the women have that symptomatic in only 25%. But 75% women are the asymptomatic. And the severity is depend upon the condition and the various state stages. So our lectures is today compromise our definitions of etiology and there's a complication, symptom associated, and the treatment treatment plan is the medical, conservative, and the definitive treatment options. So etiology is the unknown is there's a not exact etiology. It's a benign lesion of the smooth muscle, so it compromises the myoma, that is the unicellular in the origin. Estrogen, various theory is that the estrogens that may be involved in this. So estrogen receptors, they not found direct evidence, but the support evidence is that, that these are occurring in the menarchal or reproductive age group is more common. And it's not found in the women or in the persons or ladies, females, that is below the age of the 13 or 16 years of the age. And it is not found post menopausal women. Second theory supports that they are increased in the size with the pregnancy. So there is a high content of the estrogen during pregnancy. And the hormonal influence, because when you are giving the hormones, that increase the size. And we are giving the anti-estrogenic compounds, so they regress the size. That is why this gives, no, goes into supportive theory. So there is not the direct impact, but indirectly there is the estrogen, they have the relationship. So my mass contains estrogen receptor in the higher concentration than surrounding matter. That is also supported. The estrogen receptor, that is the surface area, these are containing more. So they have the receptivity for the estrogen hormones is more. Myoma may increase in the size with the estrogen trophy and in the pregnancy and decrease after menopause. They are not detectable before the puberty. Progesterone increase the mit mitotic activity and the reduced apoptosis. That is why the mode is the concern with the progesterone. Because when the progesterone is increased, to so increase mitotic activity, their size is increased. So it's have the relation with the progesterone. Progesterone increase the size of them. There's a genetic predisposition. Genetic predisposition is found in the chromosomes. Chromosome 12 and the 14. They have the relation with this the development of the myomas, and also there's a trisomy 12 in which also they found the myomas, and also there's a deletion of the short of the chromosome 7. That is, they have also found that they have this fibroid uterus. The pathology they are found sometimes in the single, large, small size, sometimes they have the multiple fibroids. Multiple fibroid may reach up to 15 centimeter size, even up to 40 kg weight size, they have the removed the fibroid. I have also removed two, three days back the fibroid that is about containing the a full term pregnancy size. So there's a, these are the consistencies formed. But if there is a cystic degeneration occur, then these are have this soft feeling. They are spheroidal or irregular lobulated type. They have a fast cancer. They have no true cancer. 
they have the pulse capsule. Pulse capsule is developed by the pressure of the tumor to surrounding tissue. They are compressed and form the pulse capsule. These are, can be easily inoculated from surrounding myometriums. Inoculated means when we are removing the fibroid, we can with the finger inoculate it. Classification, it has the classification according to site. This classification is the subserosa. That is the, the uh, uterus has three layers, serosa, myometrium, and the submucus or endometrial lining. So the fibroids, if there's a serosa layer, so subserosa sub are pedunculated fibroid when there's a pedicles enlarged. Another is the fibroid that is the in the myometrium, that is the intramural fibroid. And the other is the fibroid that is the in the endometrium, that is the submucous fibroid. Submucous fibroid is also pedunculated, and these are the also. Uh, these are subsessile when there's a no pedicles, they are adherent to the submucus. Fibroid sites are different. So they have the carporeal or extra carporeal fibroid. Carporeal, when it is contained, carporeal means uterine body. Body is a fundus system and the uterine main body is concerned. While other is the cervix. The cervix is the one person's fibroid uterus, while in the carporeal, these are the 99 up to person in the carporeal fibroid. Carporeal fibroids, the subserosal, subutus, and the intramural. While this subserosal fibroid, sometimes they are the pedunculated, they are lost its base and they are adherent become towards the uh, this uh, fellow, uh, this outside this and they take this uh, circulation from other areas. This from the omentum or other areas. So these are called the parasitic fibroid uterus. Sometimes fibroid is the intra interstitial or intramural. When they are the near to the fallopian tubes, it's the interstitial part, then it is called the interstitial fibroid. And the fibroid sometimes in the broad ligament, there is called the intraligamentary fibroids. And sometimes these are the cervical fibroids. These are the fibroids, intraligamentary, or sometimes there's a cervical fibroids. So these fibroids are sometimes these are the fibroids. Cervical fibroids and these are there is a figure classification. So, so these are the fibroids uterus. There's also there's a classification, figo classification of the fibroid uterus. Figo classification, we divide the classifications of these fibroids according to their site. So when there is a fibroid in the submucus, that is the zero station. Zero stage when there's a fibroid that is the submucus that is intramural less than 50 percent. There's one stage when there's more than 50 percent that is the stage two. Other is a fibroid that is the intramural, and other is the uh, that is the intramural that is 100 percent that is touches the endometrium. Other is category is the intramural that is not touch this endometrium. The subserosal fibroid that is the more than 50% and the less than 50%, and the other is subserosal. So, all these categorization is up to comes the eight, zero to eight classification. According to that, we have to treatment start. Uh, these are the staging, we are figure staging giving according to there's a treatment.
So the characteristics of the fibroid, age 30 to 40 years of the age, rare before 30, early after 40 years. That is, I have told you already that when there's an estrogen phase, when there's an ovulation is occurring, estrogen phase present, then they have this fibroid development. So it is usually from the start, more common, usually we observe that at least 30 years or after 30 years of the age. But it's maybe in the 20 years age. So these are starting from 20 years age up to the perimenopausal age group. Parity, nulliparous is more common than multiparous. And the race, race is the negative, is 3 to 1 ratio is more common. So 3 to 9 times more common in the negative. Hyperestrogenic phase, that is the common in the low parity are women who have the early lenarche to start and these are shrink after the menopause and they are common association with the hyperestrogenic condition. Women who have the endometrial carcinoma, women who have endometrial hyperplasia, women who have the endometriosis. So these are the common. So I have told you that the site is divided into uterine and the extra uterine. That is, you also say carporeal and the cervical. Carporeal is the 95%, that is the interstitial, submucous, subserous, and then we divide this into the submucous and the subserous and the interstitial or intramural. Intramural is the 60%. So these are the, again, these interstitial submucous subseries are intramural submucous subseries divided into stages that is more than 50% or less than 50%. That is either the subserosum or either the submucous. And the intramural or interstitial, that is also called the intramural, usually we call this the intramural. That is the interstitial is also touches 100%, that is the touches the endometrium or is the not touches the endometrium fully in the myometrial layers. So these are the different categories of the uterine. While extra uterine is the one person is the genital and the other is the extra genital. Extra genital means parasitic fibroid or other extra, uh, the parasitic, that is the uh, subserosal, that is the loss its base and they touches to the omentum. So these are called the parasitic fibroid. So these are the fibroids. That is the pedunculated subserosal fibroid, submucosal fibroid, subserosal fibroid. That is around 20 percent. Submucosal fibroid. That is a 15 percent. While 60 percent is the intramural fibroid, and the pedunculated subserosal fibroid. That is the also found. These are going to they lost their base, then they become the parasitic. Sometimes these are in the broad ligament. That is called the intraligamentary fibroid uterus. So size is the microscopic, is a small size up to huge size that is carrying up to 40 kg recorded. I have also done three to four, five days back. That is about the 40 kg weight size fibroid. And the shape is spherical, flattened, pointed according to the type where the side type, sometimes they are regrowing in between that. So they are going going to different features. Cut section, they have the whirly in appearance, more pale than the surrounding uterine muscles. Consistency, these are the firmer consistency, but when they have the soft degeneration occur, so they become soft, in, especially in case of the, they have the uh, necrosis, or sometimes in the pregnancy, they have the red degeneration, or there's a vascular or malignant changes, then they have the consistency change. Harder consistency when there's a calcification is under in the older age group, they have the harder, and these are the under radio opacity, and they also x-ray shows this calcification. Either the soft tissue X on the x-ray is not visible, the dense area present. And the previously when they have the calcifications, so they are appear on the x-rays but uh, the previously ultrasound was not present now the ultrasound is present so we can recognize on the ultrasounds capsule pseudo capsule formed by the compressed normal surrounding muscle fibers blood supply comes is from surrounding otherwise it is the 
not direct in between the centrally is a blood supply. Sur blood supply is from surrounding. That is why when these tumors are growing very large size, so they are centrally lost the blood supply and they goes into degenerative changes. So the cleavage during myomectomy is to differentiate the myoma from adenomyosis. So they have the different features, different age group, and they are different incidence. So blood supply is the nourish the myoma from periphery. So that is why the tumor is itself is a relatively avascular. That is why your tumor is centrally become necrotic changes. Microscopic structure, world appearance, non-steroidal striated muscle fibers arrange bundles running in different direction individual cells are spindle shape varying amount of the connective tissue are interlaced between the muscle fiber pseudo capsule annular tissue and the compressed myometrium arteries are less dense than the myometrium do not have regular pattern of the distribution that is why they are pale color appearance one to two major vessels are sometimes found at the base of the pedicles. Usually patients, 25% are patients with the symptomatic, while 75% are the asymptomatic. So presentation is different. Asymptomatic, you are accidentally found when they are come for infertility, you are doing the investigation, or you have to examination, or ultrasound for any other reason, you are, you are doing cesarean section, then you accidentally found that they have the fibroid uterus. Otherwise, they have no symptoms. Are, uh, while the vaginal bleeding, symptomatic women have the different presentation. Either they have the irregular bleeding symptoms, either they have the pressure symptom, either they have the infertility, either they have the other pain. So these are the different presentations. Vaginal bleeding is the commonest symptom of patient present. That is the menorrhagia or polymenorrhagia. Menorrhagia means excessive cyclical bleeding. And the excessive cyclical bleeding that is the associated why because the submucous fiber has a large surface area that is why bleeding they have estrogen receptor mode and they have the vascularity is increases that is why they have the heavy blood flow and also they have the uterus have the contract to stop the bleeding so they have the spasmodic pain polymenorrhea when these are the pedunculated submucous fibroid so they become the ulceration and they are causing the bleeding so they have the sometimes infection vaginal discharge so these are the and they have the irregular polymenorrhea means frequent bleeding so they after every 10 days they have the bleeding so associated hormonal imbalance endometrial hyperplasia surface and sometimes their women have the just fibroid but also associated with her they have the hormonal imbalance that is why they have the bleeding so avoiding this bleeding or this symptom so you will have to investigate to exclude the other endometrial pathology so associated hormonal imbalance or endometrial hyperplasia surface ulceration of the submucous fibroid or interstitial intramural fibroid act as a foreign body so preventing full contraction so there's no contraction that is why they have the rhythmic and the decreased blood loss pelvic condition and they have the because increased vascularity so they have the congestive type of the dysmenorrhea or pain and the increased uterine size vascularity or endometrial surface area they have the metrorrhagia due to submucous fibroid due to ulceration of the surface necrosis of the tip, secondary infection associated with the endometrial polyp, and sometimes associated malignancy, cancer, or sarcomatous cancer. Sarcomatous changes only less than 1% is occurring. So it's a very rare. It's contact bleeding, ulcerated, infected tip of the submucous or polyp. And they have the uh, also, postmenopausal bleeding when occur, usually they have the sarcomatous changing. So uh, they have sometimes they have the uh, women who are presented with the heavy bleeding. They have the features of the anemia. Discharge, they have sometimes there's an infected cervical polypidal fibroid. They are, have the surface ulceration and they have the discharge infection. So lycoria, mucoid discharge due to pelvic congestion or they have the mucosanguous discharge with ulcerated fibroid or mucoprolent discharge due to secondary infection. 
sometimes swelling, either abdominal wall swelling, a large fibroid, or vaginal swelling due to polyp. So, infertility, 5 to 10 percent of the case infertility. How is infertility causing or uh, subfertility? So, they have the infertility when this fibroid is near to the fallopian tube. So, they cause the kinking or the obstruction to moving of the zygote or ova that is cause the implantation hindrance. Second, there is also when there is a this zygote implanted over the where the fibroid is the intramural fibroid or deep subucous fibroid is present. So, these are not become adherent and not cause the penetration or implantation properly. So they are the loss or early miscarriage of them. So these are the reason for subfertility or infertility of the woman who have this type. So most important the underlying predisposition for anovulation or other hormonal balance to exclude them. Then brown ligament fibroid may cause the stretching or distortion of the tubes, or corneal fibroid may obstruct the uterine end of the tube, or they act as a foreign body, so uterine is contracting, that is lost or not proper implantation support time occur a cervical fiber may obstruct the cervical canal and the associated sometimes endometriosis that is also cause the infertility sometimes endometrial hyperplasia these are the risk factor in infertility causing in case of the fibroid uterus pain uncommon but if these are in close increasing size and they are going into torsion or they are become infected they cause the pain and this, this subucous fibroid, these are caused the colicky pain because when anything is present in the uterine cavity, so uterus have to contract to expel out. That is called the colicky pain. That is also called the sporous flavor. And there's sometimes dull aching pain, congestive dysmenorrhea type of the pain because when there's a vascularity increases. So these are the causing and sometimes there also the acute abdomen red degeneration especially in the pregnancy these are the red degeneration that is called the severe pain and sometimes submucous fiber undergo torsion or rupture vessel inflammation that cause the pain So sometimes there is a discharge is present and uh, they have this discharge, lacoria, mucoid vaginal discharge, pelvic congestion. These are sometimes there is a swelling like these symptoms are present. So pressure symptoms, cervical fibroid, especially when there is a large cervical fibroid, the force of the ureters is around it and they cause the obstruction over the uh, this ureters and they cause the obstructive uropathy and sometimes they have the urethra obstruction so retention of urine purely frequency micturition problem sometimes they have the retention of urine present sometimes they have the ureteric obstruction so they have the renal colic like presentations sometimes they have the over the uh, rectum pressure they cause the constipation and cells of the incomplete defecation they have the symptoms Huge fibroid, they cast this sometimes in the pelvic vessels pressure, so there's edema and the varicose vein, lower lips, sometimes GIT, distension, dyspepsia, sometimes they have the dyspnea, discomfort because of the diaphragm irritation and the pain. Sometimes they have the uh, abortions like before myomectomy, they have the 40% and after myomectomy, they have the 20% risk of the abortions. Sign of the fibroid, how they are presented, sometimes general examination with the, uh, either the anemia, sometimes they are present with the anemia, sometimes they have the present with the abdominal pain, uh, have symptoms of the pressure symptoms, sometimes they have the irregular bleeding, sometimes they have the different presentations. So the how you diagnose the treatment, management, our start is depend, depend upon the uh, there's a how much is the, the symptoms, symptomatology. So treatment depends upon the symptomatology of the patient. Second, fertility requirement, further desire of the children. Sec, third option is that the patients want what? That they are uh, needing for that, they either the conservative management or the definitive management. 
sometimes they are not want to search so depend upon the which expected management so we are divide this treatment according so management we history history we see the risk age group or parity we are all evaluate on the history history may by data may age group parity you see and the symptomatology what the symptoms are more then you comes the examination examination general physical assessment anemia you exclude the anemia then you got the abdominal examination abdominal examination if it is more than 12 weeks size this field the abdominal and the fibroids presentation the abdomen if there is a feeling the mass in the lower abdomen and these are the you cannot reach is the lower pores in the ovarian tumor you can reach the lower pore and while in this case of the fibroid uterus you cannot reach the lower pore and these are the you can move this side to side but not uh, moving the up and down so these are the fibroid uterus they are moving side to side and there is a pelvic examination the cervix is pushed upward and these are the tumor on the your digital vagina examination these are if they, these are the cervical fibroid they are taking the shape of the uterus or there's a deep intramural these are also take the shape of the uterus but these are the subserosal are there's a outside more than 50% valving the intramural they give the irregular shape to the uterus why these are the intraligamentary sometimes you cannot differentiate from ovarian to fibroid or subserosal you cannot you differentiate from the fibroid or this the uh, ovarian tumor but you can separate out when you are putting the fingers in between this tumor and the uterus you cannot take uh, the space that is the fibroid uterus if you have the your finger is passing then you can differentiate with the either the ovarian tumor and the uterus is separate out these are if they are along with the endometriosis so restricted mobility but if not then they are easily you can mobilize mobile these are the uterus when they have the fibroid speculative examination if there is a polyploid cervical fibroid then you can visualize either is the the uterine site you cannot feel that so these are the pictures some of the fibroid uterus so ultrasound presentation you can see this circular red that is the fibroid uterus these are the, the uterine outline and these are the fibroid that is the more towards the cervical region this fibroid and these are the also fibroid on the lateral view of the mri magnetic resonance imaging techniques so uterus is up and this fibroid is the lower part this you are can see this and these are the fibroid with the stereoscope these are taking the picture these are sub mucus fibroid that is appearing pearly white these are the pregnancy and along with this fibroid so you can see the fetal head and the fibroid is separate these are the visualizing and these are the fibroids the stereoscope you can see the intracavity myomas so these are the laparoscopically you can see the fibroid there's a uterus and really you see tubes are along with this uterus and the fibroids posterior surface of that that is the pedunculated fibroid so secondary changes are in the fibroid that is the i told you the degenerative changes vascularity inflammatory and the malignant changes these are the complication of the fibroid hyaline degeneration these are already these are the discussed in the pathology in the fourth year there is a secondary changes there is a menopause around where the center of the fibroid degenerate to homogeneous waxy materials the fatty degeneration that is the also occurring that is the fat with pale in the centrally is occurring and these are usually is around the age of the menopause and they have the lipid fibroid there's a periphery fibroid is changing occur so these are the women who have the calcification these are usually in the older menopausal age group the calcium is salts are becomes attached to their surface these are the permeated calcium and the steroid so they have the hard masses and the, on the x rays also visualize it ultrasound shows baby so you have to differentiate between either is a stone in the bladder or either is the uterine that is the fibroid there's a red degeneration there's really at the middle times of the pregnancy due to increased vascularity and 
uh, hemorrhage. These are usually the typical feature in case of the pregnancy. So it's got a severe pain. So we advise them to rest and they have the analgesic we give them. So these are the pregnancy associated with this fibroid. Atrophic changes, these are the menopause when estrogen is you up or when you give the GnRH analog treatment, the estrogen goes atrophy. So they have the uh, going to size shrink. And when we are giving GnRH analog, where there is, we are producing pseudo menopause. So when estrogen deficiency, they are shrink small size. And these are, we also give as a treatment in case. And we are giving the HRT, sometimes they are to increase in the size. So these are the atrophic changes that occur usually in case of the estrogen withdrawal. Myxomatous changes occur menopause in the center of the myoma forming gelatinous mucoid material which undergo pseudocystic changes. Pseudocystic changes following highland of myxomatous changes. Torsion. Torsion is occurring in the moderate pediculated subserosal fibroid going under torsion, so precipitate. The factors sudden twisting occur and the severe pain and the acute, sometimes acute abdomen and necrosis of the tumor. Sometimes they have the decreased blood supply and this cause the pain or sometimes they become parasitic. These have the features of the changing occur. So, tell injectasis. These are likely occur the pregnant malignant changes. Cervical fibroids have the increased vascularity. So they have the showing increased vascular and also internal hemorrhage. So in central, they have the blood. Lymphonjectasia, this likely to occur around the age of menopause, fibroids full of lymphatic, dilated lymphatic vessels. Congestion, edema, result of the infection of the either incarceration, torsion, infection, or pregnancy can occur. And sometimes the fundal polyp. Fundal polyp like fibroid, this big uh, cause the uterine inversion. So the fundus is coming outside from the this. So these are inversion of uterus we discussed in the also obstetric when the placenta is attached over the fundal area. But in, in case of this, when there's a mass of this polypidal fibroid over the fundus area, so it's dragging down the effect and cause the fundus ringing out from the cervix. So that is cause the inversion of the uterus. That is the chronic type of the inversion of the uterus. Inflammatory change when there's an infection occurs, especially in the submucous fibroid, where the inflammation occur and they cause the trauma or sometimes trauma. So during TNC or during labor process, so they cause the inflammation symptoms, they the temperature, pussy discharge, and the blood mixed with these type, they cause the inflammatory results of the infection. So they have the tender also and the abscess formation. So they have the addition formation sometimes they cause. So they have the sometimes malignant changes. That is the less than one person, around the 0.5 percent, and the woman who have the fibroid uterus and they undergo at the perimenopausal age group pain, tender, and rapid increasing size. Then these have the risk of the mixomet uh, these malignant changes. That is called the leiomyosarcoma or sarcomatous changes in the fibroid uterus. These are the features of this. Sarcomatous changes. So the clinical presentation, I've told you that symptoms, symptoms have the like the size and the change. When there's a which is the site, they have the common symptom according to their symptoms. So abnormal bleeding, I've told you sometimes they have the abnormal bleeding, submucus have and the bleeding sometimes interrupt the blood supply to endometrial distortion. They have the bleeding sometimes pediculated. They have this bleeding. So we have to sometimes pain and the vascular occlusion, necrosis, torsion, myometrial contractions, redegeneration, heavy fullness, feeling mass, or tumor impacted, or dyspareunia, sometimes these have the symptoms of the pain. Pressure symptoms, when there's a cervical, they call the hydrouretor, edema, pelvic vessels, congestion, sometimes the fundal pressure, bladder, and they call the retention of urine, parasitic, cause the bowel obstruction, and sometimes they are the causing the closure of the tubes, they cause the infertility. Infertility, they have the relationship of 27 to 40 percent. So we have to, uh, then myomectomy, if they have the near to that are causing obstructing tubes, so they, we have seen the 20 percent improvement. If 40 percent incidence, then we have to, after myomectomy, we improve and then uh, 
infertility risk is reduced up to 20 percent so intracavity tumor have the best result if they are causing the infertility examinations examination may myoma discovered routine by manual examination digital vaginal examination and the laboratory finding may we see the anemia depletion of the iron reserve and the atherocytosis if these are pressure symptoms over the ureters so renal atherocyte releases and they cause the polycythemia so in that situation while otherwise if there's a bleeding symptoms so they are present with the anemia if there's an infection then esr is raised or there's a degeneration or there's sarcomatous changes then esr is the raised while imaging ultrasound is the best we can see the fibroid but sometimes there is a sub mucus fibroid you cannot differentiate small sub then we do the saline infusion or hysterosonography where we saline infuse and then to the ultrasound there is a fling defect or sometimes with the hysterosalpingography we are doing for tubal pregnancy test then in said in that case you see the fling defect in the uterine cavity that is also showing that the sub mucus fibroid under the stroscope also you can directly visualize the sub mucus fibroid through the laparoscopic you can differentiate the ovarian or it's a subserosal fibroid laparoscope also we can visualize magnetic resonance imaging highly accurate delineating the size location of the myoma but it's always not necessary your clinical and ultrasound you can diagnose ivp necessary when there is a cervical fibroid or obstructing or woman with a fibroid with uropathy features or obstructive uropathy then we do the ivp or when we are doing the surgery for the cervical fibroid we do the ivp hysteroscopy when we are doing the identification and at that same setting we are doing removing then we do the hysteroscopy so differential diagnosis always you have to symptomatology symptom either with the pressure symptoms you have to differential diagnose either with the mass in the lower abdomen you differential diagnose either have the irregular vaginal bleeding with that you can differential diagnosis in these three categories you can differentiate so with the ex always exclude the pregnancy pelvic masses are ovarian or there's a renal uh, masses or there's a rectal masses ovarian tubo ovarian masses endometrioma omental bowel adherent adenomyosis Biometer hypertrophy, congenital anomalies, C endometrium, other hyperplasia, if abnormal bleeding and your differential diagnosis, C endometrium, uterine sarcoma, ovarian polyp, adrenomyces, dysfunction, uterine bleeding, endometriosis, exogenous, estrogen, if a woman is receiving exogenous estrogen therapy. For there's a perimenopausal woman who have the, some have the menopausal symptoms, this. Differential diagnosis is the symmetrical enlarged uterus with a mass, sub-involuted uterus after delivery, submucous fibroid, metropitha hemorrhagica, adenomyosis, carcinoma, pyometra, are asymmetrical enlarged when there's a sub fibroid, so you have to uh, exclude the ovarian or tubal or broad ligamentary swelling and the pregnancy in the rudimentary hand, or rudimentary hand you have to exclude that. Management is the depend upon your the symptomatology and also you have to, a treatment is dependent on the wishes for the fertility or women who are want, not want the surgery or women who want the conservative surgery, women who want the definitive surgery. So treatment is depend upon when is the conservative or expectant treatment. Second is the medical treatment. Third is the conservative approach. Fourth one is the uh, definitive surgery. So medical treatment is the uh, we are giving our expected but the expected treatment we are just keeping the observation for symptoms just small fibroid she is near to menopause she has uh, nothing other problem here yeah, just we are six monthly doing the ultrasound and just keeping observation and we tell the patient to about the every patient if a patient have any symptom then we, she is communicate with us that maybe she has the developed like symptoms. So medical treatment, medical treatment we are giving if patient is the enemy and the waiting for surgery, then we give the medical treatment. Or if there's a very large tumor and we are uh, reducing the size of the tumor or decreasing the vascularity of tumor, then we give the medical treatment. Large tumors we can 
change the incision time. If we are going to perimeter or middle incision, we can go into penetral incision if we reduce the size. If we are fibroid is doing in the hysteroscopically, so in that case also we can give the medical treatment to reduce the size. Then we sub uh, hysteroscopically remove it. And uh, hysteroscopically, we remove the tumor. That's either medical therapy size reducing, then give, or either two step therapy, you have to twice surgery this time. So, medical uh, treatment is given to reduce the size of this tumor. Or if woman is the pregnant, red degeneration, at that time, we not do the surgery. So, we give the conservative energetic treatment. Or if woman is the infertility patient and they have the just menstrual or the other problem, then we also go on to medical treatment. So symptoms, correction of the anemia, hemostasis, analgesic, anti estrogen also the drugs we are using that, that is the larger doses of the progesterone. That is the also and also the progesterone receptor modulator. One is the estrogen receptor modulator, and other is the progesterone receptor modulator. We use the progesterone re the re uh, receptor modulator, and other the anti progesterone mefiprostone, that is the RU486, and the other is the androgen, that is the denazole, that is uh, we give, and other the estrogen receptor modulator, that is tamoxifen, we are giving, and another is the GnRH. Analogs, GnRH analogs. These are the we are giving producing the pseudomenopause. Actually, these are the treatment we are giving producing the pseudomenopause. So decrease the vascularity of the tumor. Fifty percent their size is the shrink. And uh, so, but but the med drawback of the medical therapy is that that when we are giving this medical therapy, so the size is the shrink. But sometimes very small when you are doing the myomectomy, so the small size is then again regrow after it is not identified during surgery. But after surgery, when you stop that medical treatment, they are regrow. And second hindrance is that when you are enucleating, there's a difficulty in enucleating that because there's a capsule is sometimes atrophied, so it's difficult to enucleate. Surgical treatment. Surgical treatment is according to symptoms, suspected malignancy, or multiple fibroid, or they causing the infertility. So then we give the surgical treatment. Surgical treatment may conservative approach. Conservative approach may one is the myomectomy. Other is the medically assisted then surgical treatment that is we give the uh, this embolization of the vessels with the gel plow, gel form or polyvinyl alcohol. Myomectomy, myomectomy, usually we are doing this myomectomy, that is we remove the fibroid. So fibroids are the uh, removing that we are uh, That is the so age, parity, pregnancy, desired future, general health, symptoms, size, location. So whenever you are doing the surgery over this fibroid or any treatment of the fibroid, if woman is the fibroid with the bleeding, then you must do the endometrial biopsy. Endometrial biopsy to exclude the other hormonal. Uh, they have the best any pathology, so you have to exclude that. Then you go further, further treatment. If they have the endometrial other pathology, then you have to treat first that. That may be corrected. So you have to see for the situation and to correct the anemia, then you go for the myomectomy. But myomectomy is contraindicated during the pregnancy. Myomectomy is we are doing, that is the patient have the most woman uh, asymptomatic, no treatment, that is expected postmenopausal woman, no treatment, just your six monthly observation. While these are the causing the symptoms, then you have to surgery going on. And the surgery is the myomectomy, we are doing the incision. That is the incision, we are applying the mostly favorable in the myomectomy incision, the anterior surface. We are applying the incision on the anterior surface. And this incision is that is the we remove the as much fiber in single incision, not multiple incision. Best way. And that is the 
from this single incision, we are make the other tunnel incision so that we remove all other fibroids from single incision. And if there is a fibroid posterior surface and you have removed over the posterior fibroid, so we make the foot method so that we cover that scar posterior surface and the stitch is anteriorly. So there's a bowel not become added to posterior surface, so there's no antistatin obstruction occur. By this way, we doing the so myomectomy. While myomectomy, when <coughs> there's a present subserosal, that is the easy, and that is we just or surface we can remove that. But intramural and the submucous, there's a problem. And our main aim is that not open the uterine cavity. If the uterine cavity is open, then when women become pregnant, there's a dehiscence of the wound occur and the rupture uterus can occur. So by this way, we prevent to not incision the posterior surface, not incision, multiple incision, avoid to multiple incision. And we also, we give that not open the uterine cavity. But GNRH agonist analogs, that is reduce the 50% size. They have also shrink the size, hypoestrogenic state. And these are not give more than six months. Because more than six months, there is the osteoporosis occur. So we have to give the add back therapy. Means we give the estrogen along with that. Uh, we have to get through it. Then again, they have the influence over the this five right? uh, They again they free grow. So uh, we have to also plan of this surgery. Support to mares, we have to take the endometrial sampling and the pap smear and the correct uh, her hemoglobin and the we also get the antibiotic. We have to evolution that symptoms, laparoscopic, hysteroscopic, our evolution has done, and the endometrial embolization. So myomectomy, abdominal, vaginal, endoscopic, hysteroscopic, laparoscopic, embolization technique, that is the interventional radiological, that is the medical along with the surgical. So along the radiology, we give the, uh, this injection, that is the polyvinyl alcohol or gel form through the passing the femur from the catheter from the femoral vessels and then with that vessel feeding the fibroid, we inject it so the blood supply of the fibroid is reduced and the size is become shrink. But there's a risk of the infection and the pain is occur. And this in, uh, embolization technique can cause the uh, early menopause. The risk factor for this fibroid is the when there's a estrogen treatment, or you are the movement is the obese, or they have the early, they have the minarchy, or there's a nulliparity. But in the obese, uh, this woman is a smoker, they have the less risk, and the woman who are the late minarchy, multiparous woman, or they have the early menopause, they have the less risk of the myoma formations. So myomectomy, we have to remove the myoma, and we are stectomy, definitive treatment. We do the women who are associated with the blood loss. So patient must be have the emergency. We have to in the myomectomy. There's a more risk of the blood loss. So either you give the generic analog for three course of the or three months before that, and also there's a during surgery we apply the bony clamp at the stomach area, so that reduce blood supply to the there's fibroid, and then we inoculate that fibroid. So intraoperative, we have the vertical, vertical middle incision is less vascular area, and bone is clamped, chronic it as a rubber apply, and the ring forceps to apply the ovarian vessels, careful dissection inoculate, and avoid the anesthetic agent, induce the uterine relaxation, that is the halothen. Usually today we are doing the surgery in the regional anesthesia, so there's a less risk of this. Sometimes with these vessels, we uh, give the vasopressin injection, so also the collapse, these vessels could are feeding the fibroid, so less bleeding. Obliteration of the tumor cavities, and the buried sutures tumor is applied, and the unabsorbable, uh, this absorbable suture we apply. So the abdominal myomectomy and the, we are also doing the, these are procedure and you have to endometrial sampling must be exclude the others. And sometimes there's a uterus become uh, retroverted. So ventral suspension, we are the application of the round ligament too, so that the retroverted uterus is not occur. Because this retroverted uterus again cause the uterine, uh, this uh, renal symptoms and the cause the, uh, the tension of the 
urine. Vaginal procedure, this one is showing that vaginally we are removing this fibroid when there's a cervical fibroid polypida, so we have to inoculate with the twist this fibroid and the base is fulgurated with the cauterization, hydrothermization. These are the fibroids we are doing this particular toothache. These are the fibroids, these are the submucus, they have the calcification, whitish area, these are submucus and this incision you are looking there, this incision is the entry apply and they remove the fibroids. These are the also endoscopically, they are the doing the fibroids. Stectomy is a definitive treatment. Other is the fibroids is the conservative approach that MRI, they have to use the, with the ultrasound, they are removing this fibroid. So MRI along with they doing the fibroid removal there. That is also conservative but it's not available here. The other approach is the definitive treatment that is astectomy. We remove the fibroid when the family is completed, 40 years age, contraindication for the myomectomy, severe bleeding, so you are suspecting sarcomatous changes are major damage by uterus myomectomy which affect the uh, function for pregnancy and the recurrent fibroid are suspicious of malignancy, then we are doing this. Uh, these are the changes, these are the different features. These are the embolization feeding vessels. We are doing the catheterization and we are polyvinyl or gel form feeding vessels. We are giving this. These are the features of the fibroid. And then this one is a complication of fibroid region to all this. But pregnancy, in the pregnancy, they cause the risk of the fibroid over the pregnancy. They cause the abortion, they cause the preterm labor. They cause the, when they are present inside uh, with along with the pregnancy, they cause the obstructed labor during labor, or uh, when there's a sometimes the baby deliver, they cause the retention of the placenta. And if there's a uh, previously myomectomies occur, the scar uterine cavity, so placenta is adherent, so morbidly adherent placenta is can occur. So these are the complications. Follow up the, when there's a multiple fibroid, then the recurrence risk is high. If there's a single fibroid, after my, my tummy risk is the one to two percent only. Thank you, dears. Question? Okay, we will give you PPT after lecture. And uh, any question you want to talk? Any question? With chatting, you can ask any question. This book is from the your 10 teacher. You read your 10 teacher. And also there's a Bonnie's book for the surgery. Bonnie's book for the surgery. Saturday, I will take your lecture on the 10.30. Uh, this 10 teacher is the best and the bonus surgical book for the surgery. Yes, enough. 10 teacher is very good. Your cover is all the MCQ, all theoretical. Some other Russian Latif are written. That is, you also take some point from the Russian Latif and our lectures PPT is also available on this year. Yes, you go. Okay, but thank you. Madam Chan, if you believe, my video can. Thank you, dear. This chance is very good. Thank you, lecture.